Hey guys, welcome to day seven. So that marks a week of our, of our follow along so far. And um, we're gonna be doing calisthenics fundamentals this time dynamic today. Okay, so yesterday was isometric. Today's gonna be dynamic. Okay, so we're going through a few different uh, fundamental dynamic calisthenics exercises to uh, get you strong and get you feeling good, hopefully. Okay, we'll start with a quick warm up, beginning with what's called quadruples. So on all fours, scapular cars. So on all fours and from there, we're just gonna try and move the shoulder blades through the full range of motion. So push to the ears, elevate, retract, pull them together, depress, pull them down to the back pocket, and then protract, wrap them around the rib cage. Elevate, retract, depress, retract. Keeping the arms nice and straight. And just getting the muscles around the scapula nice and warm. And then opposite direction, depress, retract, elevate, retract. Keep the core nice and tight. And relax. The second one is going to be your shoulder swimmers. Okay, so you want to start with the hands. I'll probably show you facing backwards to start with. Start with the hands in this diamond shape behind our body. We try and pull the arms as far as we can away from the body. We then bring them apart, keeping the arms nice and tight. Circle the arms all the way around, pull them back as far as possible. At the top position, the palms face backwards. We reach back and touch the traps. Then we re, uh, re extend the elbows and circle all the way back around, pulling them as far as back as possible until we finish in this position. Really squeezing them shoulder blades together once we try and pull the arms back. Show you from the side, shoulders back, toss are nice and upright, abs engaged. Keep really pulling them arms back. Palms face backwards at the top. Try and bring the elbows past the ears, again, while keeping set through the abs. Drawing the ribcage down to the pelvis. Reach back, keep the elbows close to the ears. Circle back through. Last one from the front. off so shoulders and scapula should be a little bit looser now from there we'll just get into the wrists okay so wrist rock and lift first finger is going to go forwards okay first finger from there arms stay straight spine stays straight we're rocking forwards so even get the shoulders past the wrist without any pain and then we're engaging the forearm flexors sorry the forearm extensors to try and pull the hands off the floor Rocking forwards, shoulders past the wrists if we can, shoulders past the fingers, sorry, if we can. Keeping the arms straight, rocking back. Trying to lift them hands off the floor as high as possible. If possible, creating a 90 degree angle from forearm to hand. Okay, really engaging them extensors. Again, it should be pain-free range of motion, guys. So only go as far as you can without causing any pain. Okay, and shake it off. There's a little warm up, guys. If you feel like you need to spend a bit more time on them, then feel free to do another set or two. Okay, but from there, we'll, uh, we'll get into the exercises. So all you'll need, guys, is a wall. Um, if you're doing pull-ups, some sort of door frame pull-up bar or some sort of thing to pull up on, um, a ledge, whatever, if you've got real good grip strength, um, or you could obviously do rows. Okay, if you're doing rows, um, you could use your rings if you've got some somewhere. You could use the chairs that we've discussed before, where you're sort of using the chairs to row on. Okay, I will show you that at some point, um, if you don't know what it looks like, um, but you can use chairs to row. It's not ideal, but it, it works. Um, or if you're really struggling, you can you can use bands or dumbbells, and you can you can do it that way. Okay, that's all you need, guys, and that's just the wall on the floor. 
So the first superset we're gonna be going through is going to be tempo pull-ups. I'm gonna be pairing them, or I, as I said, it could be tempo rows. I'm gonna be pairing them with, what did I write down? Table rocks, that's the one. Okay, so similar to our reverse plank, but it's gonna be more of a dynamic movement as opposed to a static. So we'll start with them tempo pull-ups. So I'll just flip the camera around. Okay, so tempo pull-ups. The tempo is going to be one second up or even less than a second if we can. So exploding up nice and fast. From there, a one second pause at the top and then a five second lower. Okay, try and remain in that hollow body position the whole time, just like our, um, just like our, our um, active hang that we performed yesterday. Okay, start in the bottom position. One second up, one second pause, two, three, four, Okay guys, obviously the tempo is pretty tricky, it does make it considerably harder. Um, having said that, I'll just move you down a bit as well. One thing at a time, one thing at a time. Having said that, um, yeah, you can also use a band, you can use a spotter, you can have a, a chair in front of you and you can put your feet on the chair. So there's loads of options you can do with it guys. But a tempo does it really builds control and strength through the movement. Okay, we learn how to really engage biceps, lats specifically, as we control ourselves down slowly. You know, we have to we have to force our, our system, our body, to be able to contract that way in order to control the tempo. So it's really good in that sense, and also in terms of building muscle as well. And there's quite a lot of evidence to suggest that eccentrics cause the most amount of muscular damage, and that muscular damage then with sufficient recovery leads to uh, rebuilding and uh, your cells can expand, your, your muscle cells can expand and, uh, and you can obviously increase your, your cross-section area of your muscle. So pretty good the tempo work guys, worth doing and just you know from a positional standpoint it does really help with uh, getting strong with the movement. So table rocks now, fingers are going to face outwards. Okay, from there the shoulder's gonna come back just like our reverse plank yesterday. We drive the hips up and then we're gonna rock as far forwards as we can and then as far back as we can. 10 reps. Pushing the hips up, squeezing the shoulder blades back. Okay, so good conditioning for that straight arm strength. Again, things like back levers, transitioning your muscle up. And you'll find that as you rock forwards, you probably get a nice stretch through the pecs and the biceps. As you rock back, you feel a good contraction through the triceps and the rear delts, okay? Obviously, simultaneously, driving them hips up and keeping the shoulder blades retracted the whole time. Set one down. And to set two. Okay, so supersets guys, typically we want to go one, two. So we want to do pull-ups straight into table rocks, even though I was chatting away as usual. Pull-ups straight into table rocks, then we rest for about a minute or two, okay? Sometimes, sometimes longer, sometimes it'll be two, three minutes, depending on what exercises you're doing and how intense they are for you. Um, but yeah, so try and bear in mind with a few superset guys, you want to go straight from the pull-ups to the table rocks, then you take a little bit of a rest. Pull-ups to the rocks, then you take a bit of a rest. Okay, round number two. Okay, into the table rocks. That's to 
discuss, we want to get straight in. Fingers face outwards, shoulder blades back, feet at hip width, 10 reps. Driving the hips up, squeezing them shoulder blades back. Halfway, six, seven, keep the hips up, eight, nine, gaze to the sky. And really see how far you can push that rock back. So really load up them triceps and rear delts. You'll feel it guys, you just tip that way. Again, real nice tricep and rear delt contraction. Uh, so if you're interested, look at a skill called mana. Um, basically you start moving by tipping back like that. So there's a lot of triceps and rear delts and then you push your hips into the sky. Legs go over your head, M-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And then put mana gymnastics, is that cool? Pull-ups. This time I'll face the other way. Okay, so that you can see somewhat what my shoulder blades and shoulders are doing. Okay, very common, you'll see, pull-ups is we'll kind of dump our shoulders forwards at this, like this at the top. Okay, that's kind of creating a lock up position, but it's not necessarily keeping that nice active engagement through our lats and our uh, multiple upper back, mid-back muscles. Okay, so try and think as much as we can, pulling your shoulder blades back at the top. Okay, and keeping that shoulder set back. Not allowing it to dump forwards, then we're only really going to be using biceps. Okay, really think about setting them shoulder blades back. Okay, and think about pulling the elbows down to the to the pockets. Okay, so even if you do that now here, guys, you just sort of practice this drill I'm doing. Pull the elbows down to the back pockets, you'll really feel them last turn on. Okay, and then big prime movers for our pull ups. Okay, you should be able to see it from this side. Watch my head. Shake it off. Back in the table rocks. Last set. Arms at shoulder width, shoulder blades back. and shake it off Whew. okay so that's uh, set number one we've got two more different supersets to go the next one's going to be planche lean push-ups and external rotation to press okay so five reps for the planche lean push-up guys now on i think day one or day two we went through different push-up progressions so if you need to regress these guys and take it back to um, the incline push-up um, that's absolutely fine okay no worries at all I mean, it's, it's about working where you're at getting stronger through there and then in time you can move on to the, the other progressions okay it's not about rushing it guys it'll come when it'll come okay once you feel the strength and you can look at a movement and be like yeah I can do that chances are you'll, you'll, you'll be there so that'll just happen that's just the process of training okay let that let that happen and but don't if you don't feel like you're ready for a movement you feel like you're losing form then it's just not the time you know and it, and it will come as long as you're consistent and you keep enjoying yourself okay so planche lean push-ups just like our planche lean yesterday we turn our hands out 45 degrees so the thumb faces forwards we set up in that planche position hollow body and from there once you've got a bit of lean we push up And relax so the reason why it's harder guys is because we're tipping our shoulders forwards less weight it's going to be on our feet more weight it's going to be over our shoulders over our elbows over our wrists it does make it quite considerably harder 
If it's too difficult for now, just stick either the regular push-up or the incline push-up. Okay. Movement number two is going to be row with external rotation. So you've got two options, guys. I'll show you option one for set one. And that's going to be if you've got like TheraBand or these sort of loop bands or a very light sort of resistance band. Okay, so loop it around an object. It's not going to move anywhere. So I'm using the sofa here. I'm going to do it seated so you can see me. So from here, I'm performing a nice wide row. Nice wide row. Then imagine that the elbows have like a, a pole shove through them. So shove through my right elbow, goes through my elbow, through my arm, through my shoulder, through my uh, torso, through my other elbow and back into the wall. Okay, so it's locked in the pivot position. And there we're just gonna pivot to rotate and control back to the row. Pivot to rotate, control back to the row. If it feels super easy, we can then add the press. So once we've rotated, elbows stay in the same line, press overhead, back down, five more. Last two, keeping the elbows in the same position once we're locked, pivot, press. Last one. Good, okay. That's set number one. Two more sets to that one, guys. Um, when we do this one, we want to be really feeling it through the, the, the mid back, mid to, to sort of lower upper back, um, mid to sort of lower traps. So this kind of region here, okay, as well as feeling it through the back of the shoulders, okay. It's really important that we get that contraction, we set shoulder blades correctly. That's where we should feel the burn, okay. Often people, when they do this, will really engage their upper traps. Try and relax them as much as you can. Imagine someone's kind of just poking you there and just sort of getting you to. Relax a bit more through them upper traps. So you really send that signal to the mid back. Next set. Okay, back into rotations. This time I'll show you from a bit of a different angle. Hope you can see me. there two more relax okay shake it off final set again feel free to rest longer as well guys it's absolutely fine uh, I'm just trying to go quick so it doesn't take hours and hours to upload the video <laughs> So feel free to rest longer and pause the video at any time. Back into our punch sling push-ups for the final set. The more you lean, the harder it gets. Staying hollow. Whew. Getting hard. Okay, so as promised, um, you can also do the, uh, the row with external rotation with dumbbells, okay? So I'll kind of show you sort of how that looks. So you come into a hinge position. Now you can do this standing, obviously. I'm just gonna stay on my knees. So I don't have to move the camera from here. Row, externally rotate. And then you can also add a press. These would be a bit heavy for me to do the press. So I'm just gonna stick with the row and external rotation. And if you're in the same situation, that's fine. Um, if you don't have dumbbells or, or a band, water bottles can work really well, okay? Make sure the same white. Bring it through the mid back and the rear delts, relaxing the traps. Okay, there we have it. So Last set we're gonna do is handstand, taps progression, and then we'll pair that with hollow to well. So I'll show you three different variations of the handstand taps, and also three different variations with the hollow to well. 
So we'll start with the easier ones and then we'll build on the final set to actually doing handstand taps and hollow as well, which will be the hardest progressions. So the two easiest guys where I'd prefer you to start, okay, if you're new to this, is just gonna be push-up taps, okay? Tapping the same shoulder, minimal sway in the body. We're trying to really stay tight to the abs and the glutes in that hollow position once more. Okay, so we'll just do uh, 20 reps, same shoulder, minimal sway. Okay, if that felt challenging and about right, stick on that one. And um, for your for your handstand tap progression, exercise number two, tuck ups. So we start in our hollow body position. Okay, getting hot. Start in our hollow body position. Knees to the chest, back into hollow body. Okay. Um, if you are struggling to maintain that hollow body position, um, you could just do the hollow hold for, for 10 or 15 or 20 seconds instead. Okay, in that tuck position, that's absolutely fine. But if you come through the hollow body, we start and finish in it. Tuck up, back to hollow. Tuck up, back to hollow. Four, five, toes pointed feet together. Back to hollow. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, if it's too difficult, as I said, just hold that tuck hollow body position. If you're strong enough, and we go ahead. We can do that for about 20 seconds a modification for that drill. Second progression for the handstand taps would be, of course, our L shape or our uh, pike handstand taps. We just need a chair or something to, to stick our legs on. Take a little bit more rest if you need to, guys. From here, same shoulder, stack the, stack the hips. Same shoulder. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 17. Woo. Okay, and the second progression. Sorry, I'm rushing through this, guys. Again, feel free to pause it. Um, so the second progression is going to be the ups. So again, we start in that hollow position. This time, the leg stays straight. Same action as you took up, the leg stays straight. A lot of it's about timing. Again. Feel free to regress or stay on the same one as before if it's too challenging. It's absolutely fine. Again, guys, training is a process. It's not going to come overnight. It comes a consistent practice. Hold up. V. Try to keep legs straight. Four. Four. Five. And relax. Woo. Okay, final set. So the final option, if you can do that for the following two, then it's gonna be chest to wall handstand taps. Okay guys, so we walk up the wall, only walk up as far as you feel comfortable, guys. It doesn't have to be, you know, a few inches from the wall. It can be a couple of feet from the wall. It's absolutely fine. As long as you really strive to keep that nice hollow body position. So straight line from fingertip to toe. Obviously, if you're on an angle, that's just the way it is when you're against the wall. You know, you're gonna be on an angle and that angle will get more and more vertical as we go up. The angle is irrelevant, depends on where our hands are. The important thing is a straight line. Okay, from toes down to fingers, really keeping that hollow body position. And that should mean that you feel it through the abs. Feet together, pointy toes, tap the same shoulder. Seventeen, eighteen. Get your composure. Walk it down nice and slow. Ooh. And shake it off. Sorry about the mic catching there, guys. Might sound a bit funny. Okay. So last one. Final progression for the uh, tuck up, V up. Now hollow to well. This is hard. <laughs> Okay, so starting that hollow position again, we pop up into an L sit, feet off the floor, and back to a hollow. Okay, if you find it really hard to keep your feet off the floor, you can practice it and just you know try and get as much lift as you can. 
and it'll still be effective, but going back to the V-ups, getting stronger with them will also help. Okay, so, hollow, L, hollow, L, three, Three more. Last one. Whew. Okay, guys, take a few breaths through the nose. You might want to come into a child's pose or an up dog a little bit to stretch your abs out. Let's do that while we cool down. So come into a little bit of a sphinx pose. Let them abs stretch out a little bit. Five breaths through the nose. And then rock into a child's pose. Again, five breaths through the nose. stuff so tough one today guys feel free to add any modifications that were suggested or any of your own or if you're un unsure on any modifications just messages and we'll do our best to uh, to support you with that and um, yeah but good work that's a solid session you know these two sessions put them together you know you, and you, you do that consistently you're going to be making some good kind progress so uh, yeah awesome work really enjoyed having you and hopefully you uh, you found some value and enjoy yourself as well uh, as mentioned pretty much every day you can get out for a walk or some loaded carries or a, a, an easy run or anything outside please try and do that because uh, that'll be great for the recovery and just great for the heart and soul so yeah awesome guys looking forward to seeing you tomorrow <laughs>